morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz, and here is your detailed nationwide weather forecast for Friday the 16th of May 2025. A lot to get through today, but first of all, thank you so much for 40,000 subscribers, an incredible milestone for the Cyclops Oz channel, I couldn't thank any one of you enough for the recent support, but let's get stuck straight into things today with showers, thunderstorms, rainfall across New South Wales and southeast Queensland, plenty more rainfall still to come in a potential east coast low, that's coming in the next couple of days after some widespread shower and thunderstorm activity through the central Queensland area, extending down in towards south central Queensland and then through southeastern Queensland. We have had some respectable rainfall accumulations in the last 72 hours, up to 100 millimetres along the Sunshine Coast and between 20 and 80 millimetres along the Gold Coast and into the Brisbane area. And we've also had falls between 20 to 50 millimetres outside into the interior parts of Queensland as well. Uh, places that spring to mind right now, Longreach, Jericho, Tambo, Augathella, Charleville. While none of those locations that I've just mentioned have picked up some extreme rainfall accumulations, we have have had some reasonable rainfall accumulations in that general area from a couple of showers that have been moving through the region in the last couple of days. And you can see that they are now starting to die off across the southeastern parts of Queensland and also into the south central parts of Queensland, but there is still more to come. So as we zoom out, you can see just having a look at the general weather picture here, and I'll get to New South Wales in a second. We've got this low pressure system situated now just offshore from New South Wales, and that's drawing down a lot of moisture from the north into the tropical regions of Queensland. It's drawing that moisture down into the south and there's plenty of moisture also sliding in now from the northwest as well and we also have that developing low pressure system in the southwestern corner of Queensland which is the precursor to the next east coast low that we're going to be potentially seeing later this weekend into early next week offshore from New South Wales a very complex picture for New South Wales and Queensland but yeah like I said rainfall streaming in from the north at this point in time and that's going to leave some healthy rainfall accumulations in the gauges along the central Queensland coastline in the next 48 hours we could be seeing widespread falls between 20 to 50 millimetres for locations between Yapoon down through Rockhampton, Gladstone and Bundaberg and an isolated falls up to 100 millimetres are possible around the Gladstone and Agnes Water region. Again, those falls quite unlikely at this point in time and they will be located right on the coastline. So even if you're about 10 kilometres inland, such as Rockhampton, the rainfall accumulations there are going to be a lot lighter. Thankfully, not an awful lot of rain coming in for the Sunshine Coast considering that the rainfall is going to be streaming in from the northwest. We're not expecting heavy falls there. They will be protected. And then falls between 10 to 50 millimetres expected across the wider southeast Queensland area, heavier falls expected into the mountainous areas outside of Warwick and Wollongara, and then falls up to about 50 millimetres also expected into the northeast of New South Wales, but generally speaking this weekend is going to be a little bit drier, and you can see that quite clearly, yes there will be a few showers and thunderstorms here and there, especially through tonight through northeast New South Wales and into southeast Queensland, the rainfall will actually be at its heaviest later on tonight through parts of southeastern Queensland, and you can see there will actually be quite a lot of rainfall around as we get to the, late, uh, to the later hours of tonight across southeast and south central Queensland but generally speaking we're not expecting anything too crazy later tonight into early tomorrow morning. The heaviest rainfall accumulations shouldn't exceed 75 millimetres through Greater Queensland and into New South Wales and then like I said that lull in the rainfall through Saturday and into early Sunday morning there will be a few showers here and there along the uh, New South Wales coastline through early Sunday morning and even some snow into some of the higher elevations through New South Wales and Victoria as we get that very cool change coming in from the south that's going to feed into the low pressure system that's going to emerge offshore from New South Wales through Sunday morning and into early Sunday afternoon. And then it's going to be go time here. We're going to see a very strong developing low pressure system begin to take hold through Sunday afternoon and evening and then into early Monday morning when we're really expecting this system to be to begin to gather some steam. So again, another very complex low pressure system forecast here beginning Monday morning. And we've, there have been a lot of moving parts and a lot of changes in the forecast over the last couple of days, but I think we can now begin to say for sure what we're expecting here. It'll be a very broad low pressure system to begin with developing well offshore from New South Wales is northeast so probably between Lismore and Lord Howe Island somewhere in this kind of general area here we'll start to see this low pressure system begin to develop and it will be strong that's for sure. Now as we see with these low pressure systems offshore from New South Wales plenty of rainfall and moisture expected to swing around from the south and the southeast and we will likely see some heavy rainfall accumulations along the New South Wales coastline and again the location of this heavy rainfall has over the last couple of days trended a little bit further north. A couple of days ago we were looking at well, right around the Sydney and the Gosford sort of area. Now we're looking north of Newcastle up through the Barrington Tops and up towards Taree, which is kind of a bad thing considering that these locations historically can pick up about twice or even three times as much rainfall that Sydney can. So we do actually expect some very healthy rainfall accumulations through Monday night into early Tuesday morning. But the key takeaways here is that this low pressure system is expected to be quite strong, hovering offshore from the northeast New South Wales coastline between Coffs Harbour and Lismore. Damaging winds expected on the southern side of this system here before it 
unravels, it unravels itself later on Tuesday into Wednesday, sliding down the New South Wales coastline and then emerging with another strong low pressure system through Thursday and into Friday. Like I said, a very complex forecast here, heading deeper out into the Tasman through Friday and into Saturday and then falling apart as it approaches New Zealand by the looks of things. Right now, the main threats from this system do look to be the ocean uh, conditions. We're expecting a pretty turbulent time, that's for sure, offshore from New South Wales in the next seven days. This is a map here showing wind accumulation, which highlights the strongest wind gust expected from the forecast models in the next seven days. So wind accumulation, 90 km an hour wind gusts expected to be the maximum outside of Tari and Newcastle, and some pretty strong wind gusts as well expected down into the southeast of New South Wales and down onto the Victorian coastline with gusts there, potentially as high as 105 to 110 kilometers an hour, quite serious stuff, that's for sure. And that's going to be from this low pressure system unraveling itself through Tuesday and Wednesday, and then combining with further energy through Thursday, where another broad low pressure system can be expected. And you can think of that as kind of an, a second East Coast low. It kind of uh, transforms into a completely different system through Tuesday night, Wednesday, and into early Thursday morning. And the low pressure system goes from being located offshore from Coffs Harbour, falling apart, and then builds itself again into the southeast of New South Wales. In terms of the ramifications that that might have for the major population centres of Wollongong and Sydney, it doesn't look like it's going to have too much of an impact at this point in time, but it will certainly play a dramatic part in really spiking some of the rainfall accumulations expected for parts of Victoria and into the southeast of New South Wales. This forecast here is going to have to come in the next couple of days because, again, I'm still scratching my head over what we're actually expecting down there, so I'll keep you posted on that, but it will happen again in the next couple of days. This is a map showing rainfall accumulation, which means total rainfall expected in the next seven days here across the New South Wales coastline. You can see widespread rainfall accumulations over the course of tonight into tomorrow, expected to be between 20 to 50 millimetres up into the northeast of the state. The heaviest falls will be into the uh, mountainous areas outside of Wollongara and Warwick on the Queensland side of things, where we could be seeing up to 75 millimetres. And then rainfall accumulations, depending on where this low pressure system does actually get itself located between Monday and Tuesday, which at this point in time looks to be offshore or just towards the northeast of Coffs Harbour at this point in time, the rainfall will get its heaviest immediately south and then extending quite far south of said location. And you can see that means some serious rainfall accumulations expected between Coffs Harbour right down towards Gosford and Sydney, but especially between Port Macquarie down towards Newcastle, including Foster, Tari, uh, and out towards the Barrington Tops as well, where peak accumulations over the next week could be as high as 250 millimetres. There have been some pretty wacky forecasts coming out over the last couple of days here, suggesting rainfall accumulations up to four or 500 millimetres. I find that if you look on Facebook, you tend to get those really, really wacky numbers as well, just because there's so many forecasters out there with so many different takes and so many different forecast models that they favour. But here it does look like 250 millimetres is kind of the upper echelon of the rainfall that we can, that we can be expecting for even this part of New South Wales, the Barrington Tops, one of the wettest locations in New South Wales, historically speaking, or actually the wettest location in New South Wales, historically speaking. But 250 millimetres looks to be their ceiling at this point in time, but it's going to be coming through on pretty much just Monday and Tuesday. The rainfall is expected to be quite problematic around there. Now, we have seen the rainfall behave over the last couple of days in quite an interesting fashion, and you can really see that in the one-hour satellite imagery here. Whilst it is now starting to stream in from the uh, southeast, or at least the rainfall is appearing to kind of move in that southeasterly trajectory at this point in time, the rainfall has been incredibly slow moving, and we have had some pretty heavy deluges, especially between Gosford up towards Newcastle, where falls to 100 millimetres have been reported. So uh, keep in mind that the 250 millimetres that could be coming in for this part of New South Wales will occur over already extremely saturated ground conditions and will likely just result in runoff. So through early Tuesday and into Wednesday, we do expect a little bit of flash flooding and riverine flooding across the central coast of New South Wales, extending up and towards the mid-north coast, with, the, with these rainfall accumulations definitely being quite heavy in some locations, that's for sure. So definitely something to be keeping in the back of your head right now. In terms of a place-by-place -place forecast, you can see Port Macquarie expecting about 80 millimetres of rainfall, Tauri and Foster closer to 125 millimetres, Newcastle as well around that 125 millimetre mark, falls up to 100 millimetres possible around Gosford and especially towards the north of Gosford as well. Sydney's uh, western suburbs won't pick up any more than about 25 millimetres of rainfall, but the eastern suburbs along the coastline and into Sydney Harbour could see up to 75 millimetres of rainfall and falls up to 50 millimetres expected around Wollongong, Nora, Oladola, Batemans Bay and then down towards Nooroomba where the falls will then begin to pick up again for the southeast of New South Wales and into the eastern half of Victoria. Again, that will be a forecast for a later date. But certainly some interesting stuff, that's for sure, coming in for New South Wales. If you've got any questions or comments, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. Certainly some severe weather, that's for sure. Certainly something to keep in the back of your head at this point in time, and certainly something to be prepared for, that is for sure, across this part of New South Wales.
South Wales. Now, just before we head up north and over west, we're going to be talking about some rainfall and then down into the south, where we're going to be talking about some drought conditions. If I extend this rainfall forecast here out to the 14 days, you can see some really serious rainfall accumulations now on the cards for south central Queensland and then in towards the southeast of Queensland as well, with peak falls here along the Queensland coastline could be potentially as high as 500 millimetres of rainfall. Now, normally you'd be thinking, why am I showing you this? Because it's obviously a model fluke. Well, it actually might not be, considering that the GFS forecast model is also calling for some low pressure activity across this part of Queensland in a very different fashion to what the European forecast is suggesting at this point in time and the GFS also has been notoriously unreliable over the last couple of weeks so I would take this with a very heavy pinch of salt but just to elaborate on this we might be seeing some low pressure activity developing sometime between the 25th out to about the 30th offshore from Queensland into the Coral Sea whether it's going to be a full-blown tropical low or just convergence activity developing deeper out into the Coral Sea it could have some major ramifications in terms of of rainfall along the Queensland coastline. At this point in time, still way too early to be telling exactly what's going to be happening here and in what fashion the really heavy rainfall is going to be developing and materialising in, but I would just like everybody along the Queensland coastline to remember that we will be once again heading into an active period sometime between the 20th out towards uh, the 25th out to about the 30th of May, and that could bring with it some heavy showers and thunderstorms for parts of the Queensland coastline. Again, at this point in time, far too early to be telling exactly what's going to be happening in terms of rainfall accumulations, where the rainfall is going to be located, but I thought that it was an interesting aspect on the forecast, and it could be something that materialises at this point in time. Again, I would also like to say that this is looking very long range out into the future. It's also an unusual weather event and not something that we see happen every uh, year across this part of Queensland. So again, I would just like everybody to remember that this is long range forecasting at its finest. It, take it with a very heavy pinch of salt. In fact, take it with the whole salt shaker because it isn't guaranteed at this point in time. It's not set in stone and things can and they most certainly will change. This could completely disappear off the forecast, but I thought that it is definitely worth mentioning considering A, it is a pretty serious amount of rainfall on the forecast and B, it's always better to be informed than to be unaware of weather events like this. But there's absolutely no need for preparations at this point in time. I just thought that I would show because it is an interesting aspect on the forecast at this point in time. The good news is that the Eastern River forecast has brought back the rainfall for the southwest of Western Australia and it's also got a little bit of rainfall now in the cards of parts of South Australia and Victoria. Let's break that down for you right now. So again, this high pressure ridge is still remaining very strong across the Great Australian Bight, and that's blocking pretty much all winter weather activity, minus a couple of showers that are streaming into South Australia today. And we will see a couple of showers and potentially even some decent falls, which unfortunately decent falls right now constitutes anything over a couple of millimetres of South Australia. That's how desperate they are for rainfall. Uh, throughout the course of tomorrow afternoon and into early tomorrow evening, the rainfall then dropping off once again on Sunday as a very strong high pressure ridge begins to build into the eastern half of the Great Australian Bight. We'll see a weak cold front approach to the southwest of Western Australia by the 19th of May. That could provide a couple of showers here and there for the southwest corners, but not likely to make it up into the Perth metro area. And then rainfall is going to be a little bit heavier than what it has been across South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania through Monday and Tuesday, the 19th and 20th of May, respectively. And then it looks like some more serious cold front activity approaches the southwest of WA through Saturday the 24th, then making its way into South Australian Victoria with some healthy rainfall accumulations expected through the 24th out to the 25th of May and then rainfall again following up with that again with a powerful cold front on the 27th of May and that cold front making it down to the south, uh, to the southern parts of Tasmania through the 28th and the 29th of May but I would just like to say that the key takeaways from this forecast right now there's cold fronts coming in the rainfall isn't too far away for the southern states especially South Australia and Victoria and even though Western Australia right now is dominating the rainfall forecast across the nation south it is really good to see that we're now starting to see some cold fronts fire up on the forecast because very shortly they'll be firing up on the radar imagery and the satellite imagery as well. So again, this is exciting stuff. The rainfall will be knocking on South Australia and Victoria's uh, door very shortly. And we're expecting semi-average rainfall across South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania as we get an, out in towards June as well. At least that's what the long range models are suggesting. So there will be some rainfall down there. It's just going to be again a bit of a waiting game, which unfortunately will take us out towards the later parts of May. And they do desperately need the rainfall in a lot of locations. Cannot wait any longer for the rainfall, but there is rainfall on the cards of South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, and also for the southwest of Western Australia, which is very good news indeed. Uh, again, take it with a pinch of salt because we are looking at it much later on into the forecast period, but it has been a pretty solid feature over the last week or so. So again, as we get out towards the early parts of next week, I should be able to say exactly when the first good rains will arrive for the southwest of Western Australia, into South Australia, into Victoria, and then over Tasmania as well. But on that note, that is all that I have time for today. Again, a special shout 
shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And a special shout out to all 40,000 of my subscribers as well. I could not run the show without the, uh, without you guys. And again, just 18 months on YouTube and to reach this number and this audience as well, it truly is heartwarming. And well, so again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for the ever uh, the uh, amazing support and the everlasting support as well on the Cyclone Souls channel. That is all for me today. And I'll catch you all at the next storm. Goodbye.